Okay guys, welcome back to my channel. I am gonna be doing assumptions this week. Uh, I think like two weeks ago, I posted on Instagram a little assumptions sticker asking you guys anything you're assuming about me and I was gonna respond to them. I didn't get to it and so I'm doing it on YouTube now. Um, yeah, I had kind of a crazy week. I graduated finally, so exciting. We had like a big virtual graduation. I wore my old high school <laughs> um, cap and gown. We went down to the beach and my mom actually hooded me and then I walked across on the sand as my grad walk. We had like a whole slide, a virtual slideshow and ceremony. It was actually really cute, but it was kind of funny. It feels really good. I'm very excited. Oh yeah, and I've also had kittens with ringworm. So I've been dealing with that. Had a lot of work stuff going on. So it's been kind of insane over here. But let's see your guys' assumptions you have about me. All right, today. This is crazy. I have them screenshotted on my computer and there are 75 screenshots. There are a lot about assuming why I went on Bachelor. So I will address the question, why'd you go on Bachelor? Because I feel like there's just a lot about this. So I'm just gonna do that. Okay, so this is kind of a long story, but basically in college, I was approached to do a docu-series that followed around students from a conservative college. And at first I was really hesitant about it. Time went on and I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. Did it, ended up loving it. It was so much fun. Um, I got paid like an on-campus job, so like a little stipend. And it kind of opened up my eyes to the whole TV, media, entertainment, reality world. Otherwise, I had no idea about. So after I graduated college, I was single. And it, this is really, this is where it gets kind of weird. I woke up one morning and I had, mind you, I had never watched Bachelor ever really. Like I had known about it. I'd watched maybe parts of episodes, never followed a season, never really watched a full episode. And I woke up one morning having had a super vivid dream about having been on Bachelor. I was like, oh my gosh, how, like, is that even a thing? Like, do people get on Bachelor? What is Bachelor? Like, how do I apply? Can you apply? I don't know. And so I Googled it. That week there happened to be a casting call in like the town over. And so I was like, maybe this is a sign that I should like apply or something. I went downstairs and I was like, I have to apply for this show and just like see what's up. So I kind of did it for fun. I applied within the hour, they got back to me and were like, oh, we want to meet you. Um, come to the casting call. So I was like, Okay, I went through the whole process. It's such an intense process. It's like a ton of interviews, one-on-one -on -one interviews on camera, and then there's interviews in front of all the different producers, really intimidating. And so I did that, there's health checks. I think I got blood work done at one point, psych exams, a bunch of paperwork. You stay in a hotel at one point. Like it's just really intense. Went through that. And then at the end of it, they were like, Cassie, you're so young. I was 21 at the time. The bachelor that we chose for this year is actually older. And so we don't think you're gonna be a great fit. And I was like, okay. Funny because the bachelor actually ended up being Nick and Nick and I are now friends. So hi Nick. I almost was on your season of bachelor, which is so weird. Anyways, the next year they called me again and I happened to be single again. I ended up going back through the whole process, getting through to the end and they called me. And I thought that the bachelor was gonna be Dean or Peter and you don't really end up finding out who it is until the very end. They called me and they were like, Cassie the Bachelor is actually Ari. Um, how do you feel about that? Whatever you think, like if you wanna go on or if you don't. Ari, I think you're so great, but at the time I was still like 22, I was so young and I feel like the age gap was just still too much for me. So I actually ended up turning it down and just being like, you know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And I just like wasn't, I didn't feel it that year. So I, I said, no, I told you this is a long story. The next year, they called me again, and I ended up going through the entire process again because you have to go through it every single year. And long story short, made it on that year, felt good about it, and that's how that whole thing happened. I think at that point, I was like, you know what? I got offered to do this. This is an opportunity that came up. Like, I'm just gonna, I gotta do it because I feel like I should do it at this point. I was also young and down for the adventure and the experience, and I didn't really know what would come of it. I just wanted to have fun with it. And I think looking back, it's like a little bit naive <laughs> because I had no idea what 
it would bring. I don't know, I hadn't really given that part much thought, like the aftermath much thought at all. When I tell you I had no idea what would come of it, I really mean I had no idea what would come of it. There was a point at the end of it where a ton of people and people online and just like trolls were assuming why I was there and questioning me and my character and my motives. It was like very hateful. There was a ton of nasty messages I was getting. There was even a point the last week where the producers were like, Cassie, you should, you should deactivate your accounts. You should probably turn off your phone for a week because like people are really mean. I was just shocked. I had no idea people could be that mean. I went on the show just to kind of see what would happen, to enjoy the experience and have the best come from it, whether that be love or friendships or fun or just an experience. I didn't know, I just did it. So there's that. <laughs> you don't like to cook. Actually, cooking is one of those things where I like to think that I like to cook. I actually do really like cooking when I have time to cook. I'm not very good at it at all and I'm trying to get better. There's actually this one company called Green Chef and I've been getting their meals delivered to my door. It's such a good company. They're a USDA certified organic company. They have a ton of dishes for a variety of lifestyles and I actually just cooked one of their meals earlier and just ate it, it was so good. It was a cheeseburger. And the great thing about it is if you cook it following the step-by-step -step directions to a tea, it literally tastes professional. I made it for me and a few of my friends and it was so good. I was very impressed with myself. I was like, okay, this wasn't even me cooking it. I mean, it was me cooking it, it wasn't my directions, but it tasted like I knew what I was doing. And I like it too, because it fits a variety of different lifestyles. So say you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, or like nothing at all, just want to be healthy. You can pick whatever kind of meal plan you want to follow and they will cater to it. Every single week you pick your lifestyle or meal plan and there's nine different meal options you can choose from. Really easy to use. You can also switch up your meal plan whenever you're ready to try a new way to eat. My favorite part about it is the fact that it's delivered right to your door so you don't have to worry about doing all the prep that goes into cooking. I also try and always buy organic and as clean as possible. And the fact that Green Chef is high quality, clean ingredients, like they're organic, non-GMO, sustainably sourced, I really like that you just kind of know what you're eating with them and you don't have to worry about that. I actually have a code for you for Green Chef. You can go to greenchef.us slash 90 Cassie Randolph and use my code 90 Cassie Randolph and get $90 off plus free shipping on your first box. Highly recommend. More assumptions. This one, you never stress. You guys are talking to the queen of stress recently. Normally like to be a stressful person, but I think recently I've just and there's lots going on. Maybe it's the new house, maybe it's the cats with ringworm, but um, I've had a lot of stress in my brain these days and that is something that I'm working on. You are very selfish. I don't think I am selfish actually. I feel like people would be shocked to see the nasty things people will just say. And the weird part about it is people will say really mean things, not anonymously. Like they'll say it and their name is like right there for me to go know who's being mean and nasty to me. Like, hello, you should see some of the other ones I get. Maybe I'll do a whole YouTube on like troll comments that I get. And this one's just the opposite. You are always kind, that's so nice. See, I love nice people. I like to be as kind as I can most of the time, but I don't know, that's just a nice thank you. It's so nice of you to say that. Might be a weird one, but you are shorter than you look. Uh, I don't know how short I look, but I'm 5'5". Five five. You're really shy until people get to know you. Okay, this is so funny. I've had, oh, there's so many assumptions on here that are like, you're shy, you're an introvert, you're timid. Do I come across as shy and introverted and timid? Because I don't think I'm very shy. I think I might be a little more on the quiet side if you don't know me or if I'm in a situation where I feel a little bit uncomfortable. I wouldn't consider myself a shy person because I feel like I like to stretch myself to not be shy. You got rid of Axel and Rose. I did not get rid of Axel and Rose. They're still mine. They just aren't in Huntington right now because the move and the cats with ringworm has been a lot, but me and Michelle are kind of gonna figure out what to do with Axel and Rose as soon as my life gets squared away because I feel like my life is like, Axel and Rose are being spared from my crazy life right now. Michelle is being Axel Rose mom. You get a ton of lip filler. I can't tell you how many times I get the question about filler and Botox and all of that. And sometimes I'll get the nastiest hate messages about work I've gotten done. And sometimes I'll get those messages and it will have been like nine months since I did 
anything at all. And I'm not afraid to be like really open and honest about this kind of stuff because I don't really care to not be like, whatever. I don't mind being real about it and transparent. I know people have a bunch of opinions on filler and Botox and all that kind of stuff. Personally, I like to keep it as natural as possible, err on the side of less is more, but also like to each his own. I feel like there's no point in worrying about what one person chooses to do or doesn't choose to do. Do whatever you want to do. I haven't gotten anything in a really long time. I get lip filler. I get Botox. I've gotten it in my forehead before, gotten it in my crow's feet before, but that goes away really fast. I've also gotten it in my jaw. This last year, really struggled with a lot of stress and anxiety and stuff. And I started clenching my jaw as I sleep, which is not something I ever used to do before. I would get really, really bad like headaches from clenching my jaw and I'd wake up with really bad headaches. So I tried Botox, it actually worked really well, but I don't think it was a really good long-term solution. So ended up getting a mouth guard and that has been working so far. That is that. I've also tried cheek fillers before. I haven't gotten them in a long time because I naturally have really defined cheekbones. So I got a lot of lip filler or filler or Botox, whatever questions on here. And that's what I do. So there we go. That's my opinion on it. Um, your parents bought your house for you. They did not. I bought my own house. You are not gonna work in speech pathology. Okay, you guys, I did not go to school for almost 20 years and work my ass off to put myself through graduate school to not use my degree. So yes, I'm going to work in speech pathology. I'm actually very excited about it. I love speech pathology, I have a really big passion for it. It's one of those things that just genuinely brings me joy doing. Here I go, getting emotional. <laughs> It's one of those jobs that you go to work and you come back and even if you've had the longest day You're just so like filled and happy and you've spent your day Helping people and it just feels good. I love my job. I love speech pathology I've never met a speech pathologist who doesn't like their job. Also, I'm working on a really fun project with my mom and my aunt um, who are both in school with me for speech pathology and I'm so excited to share it with you. So yes, the career of speech pathology will continue. I'm just gonna go on a quick little speech tangent here. So I think one of the best parts about speech pathology is the fact that not only is it such a fulfilling career, but there's so many different avenues that you can go into with speech. So you can work with kids, and I feel like that's the main one that people think of when they think speech pathologists, they think you work with kids. Um, you work on like speech impediments and kids who have trouble speaking, but that is literally just the tip of the iceberg because you could work with adults with traumatic brain injuries. You could work with adults who have had strokes. Um, you could work on accent reduction. You could work on accent modification. You could work with professional voice users or speakers. You can work with actors. You could work with singers who are trying to accurately use their voice. You could also work in speech read, teach people how to read lips, which is something I don't know how to do, but I think you have to be specially trained. But a speech pathologist is a person who can be specially trained. So many different things that you can do. And me personally, there's a lot of assumptions on here, assuming what avenue I'm gonna go into in speech pathology. I don't know yet fully. We will kind of see how it goes. But again, stay tuned for more speech stuff to come. But this is just the beginning of my speech career. So gonna answer a few more. You're secretly applying to PhD programs. I'm not. <laughs> it was really funny that you assume this though. I'm not secretly applying to PhD programs, but I have thought about it. I feel like now that I'm out of school, it's such a weird thing to be out of school. I feel like the utmost hasn't sunk in yet. Should I get my PhD? Honestly, maybe one day. I'm just gonna like enjoy being done with school for now. You don't talk to Kaylin anymore. This is another one that I get a lot and I know Kaylin does too because we've talked about it before. And you know why people assume this is because there was a time like right after Bachelor or even while Bachelor was airing where me and Kaylin were, our paths were crossing all the time. We lived by each other. We were doing the same things. Like we were, our lives were just very intertwined. Now that our lives aren't as intertwined and she lives farther away or I live farther away, we're not together all the time, so you guys don't see it, but we still are. We still are really good friends. Me and Kaylin still talk. We're still close. We still love each other. Kaylin, I love you. You don't lift weights. You know what? Okay. I used to lift weights a lot more, and ever since like COVID hit, I stopped going to the gym, and I don't own weights, and I really should lift weights because I know how good it is for you. You're right, and I need to. 
I need to. You're a legend. Thank you. You're super organized. I am very organized. I am. And you know what? I think it might be a fault of mine how organized I need to be because sometimes I feel like I can't fall asleep unless my whole house is clean. Like I'm a neat freak. You only started liking plants after buying your house. This one is like sadly so true. I'm gonna end on this one because I just think it's funny. Literally had never taken care of a plant before. I never owned a plant ever in my life. And then I got my house and I think now, probably have like around 60, 70 plants now. And I'm like really, really trying to keep them alive. If there's any plant tips out there, let me know. Also this last week we built a trellis, which is really cool. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap up this video and just say thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, concerns, whatever it is. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if you liked the whole assumptions thing. I will see you guys next week.